Welcome to Grow Virtually, an online horticultural educational program presented by the Master Gardener Volunteers of Cobb County. Under the guidance of the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension Service, we grow gardeners. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Moore and I'm a Master Gardener here at Cobb County. I've been a Cobb County Master Gardener for about seven years and one of my passions is a topic that we're discussing today, and that's vegetable gardening. Okay, so we're talking about uh, vegetable gardening for beginners. So, and this presentation is uh, a presentation focusing only on beginner vegetable gardening. So we're doing an overview of just basic things. Uh, and as I said previously, if you didn't uh, hear me, uh, vegetable gardening is one of the reasons I got into master gardening to, be to begin with. Uh, and so it is very near and dear to my heart. We are going to uh, focus on a few uh, factors on site selection, um, planning your um, vegetable gardening, uh, your warm vegetables versus your cool vegetables. Uh, we're going to take a look at your soil what you need to do to prepare for this, um, your plant selections, how to fertilize and water and give you some tips and cultivating and uh, planting. And so what do we really need to do in order to start a home vegetable garden? Um, the first things first is to choose a location. So, uh, that is the first place that you need to look in your uh, garden as to whether or not you have a location that um, your plants will like and thrive. Uh, the second thing you need to do is make a plan because you're, when you think about what you want to accomplish and think about the, uh, the types of vegetables that you want to grow, uh, you will be able to reap a, a, a bountiful harvest in the end. Uh, the third thing we're gonna look at is soil preparation. This is a very important step and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in later slide. Um, and th then you're gonna have to figure out what you wanna grow and whether or not you wanna grow with seeds or transplant from the nursery. And then we'll talk about mulching and fertilizing and water and harvesting. You know, I feel like during the pandemic, a lot of people got really involved in gardening all of a sudden. Uh, so there's been a lot of interest lately uh, as to whether or not uh, people can grow their own food. So let's look at the first thing and that's gonna be sunlight. Sunlight is the first priority. And what you wanna do is make sure that what, wherever you're going to have um, your, your garden plot, you need to have at least six to eight hours of sun minimally. Um, you can technically grow things in less than six hours, but if you really want to uh, get the maximum amount of harvest, you, you, you'd want to get uh, at least eight hours. Um, if you have more than eight hours, that's, that's, that's wonderful, but I, I wouldn't go less than six hours. Um, you can also grow uh, leafy vegetables and herbs, probably in, 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 in from the six hour, from the minimum hours, but again, you, you'll, you'll find you'll have, you have better outcome with uh, six to eight hours of sun. Uh, the drainage in the soil. So you need to make sure that where, where the location is with full sun, you need to have good drainage. Um, that means make sure that you're not going to be in a swampy area because you don't want the water to be standing there. And um, remember plants need both air and water. So if it's flooded, you're going to prevent the plant from um, getting the oxygen that it needs in its roots. 
Uh, the other thing you might want to consider is the convenience factor. How close is your plot going to be to your home? Um, if you are not going to be near your plot, you might want to uh, set yourself a reminder to go check it because I tell you, out of sight, out of mind, and you don't want that to be a model while you're trying to garden because you got to go weed the garden, you got to water the garden, you have to check it for insects and diseases. And you can't do that on a regular basis if your garden is, you know, 10 miles away. I say that, and there's some of you that actually might have a community garden plot. And if that's the case, then it probably won't be in your backyard and you probably will have to drive a little distance in order to visit your garden. Um, but there again, set yourself a reminder because it's very easy to forget if it's not uh, convenient and close to where you can actually access it. And of course, finally, the water supply. And that should be a no brainer. You want to be able to have that accessible uh, since um, as soon as you plant, you're gonna need to water it on a regular basis. And if it gets really hot, you're gonna to have to need to water it on a regular basis. Um, community gardens all have hoses that are nearby, but if it's in your home, don't have it on the side where your hose is not. So factor that also into the location of where you're going to uh, put your garden plot. So now is the time to plan. So you want to think about what you want to grow. This, this should be kind of a fun thing. Um, you know, to me, this is one of the most exciting parts of growing a vegetable garden because you can change it up. You know, as each season comes around, you have an opportunity to think about what you want to grow in that season. You want to think about things like your time and effort. So that plays a big role as to how big of a plot that you want to grow. Um, so if you don't have a lot of time, it wouldn't make sense for you to actually have a big plot somewhere um, that's going to be tedious for you. So obviously, if you have a short amount of time, but you want to grow something, keep it small so that you can manage it. Um, draw it out on a graph paper. Uh, that's another great idea, uh, especially if you're going to go large, uh, because if you draw something out and visualize it um, on paper, it will really help you uh, squeeze in the kind of plants that you want to, and, and you can manage your plants more effectively that way as well, because depending on where it is, uh, south facing, north facing, east facing, um, as far as the garden is concerned, you can kind of determine also where the, the, the tall plant should go versus the smaller or the bushier plants, um, just so that uh, the light is not, um, is the, your, the taller plants aren't casting a shadow on the smaller plants. So the diagram will ha help a lot if you have it on graph paper. So let's go over some warm season vegetables. Um, so we are very fortunate here in Georgia. We have a very long growing warm season. And because of that, we have quite a few opportunities to grow way more than what's on this list on this slide. Um, I'm just gonna go down the slide a little bit here. Uh, we know that tomatoes are the most popular vegetable to grow or fruit, uh, depending on you know, who you ask, I guess, Fruit is technically what a tomato is, but um, if you're like me, the tomato is probably what got you in interested in, in growing anything. Um, I mean, there's nothing like picking a tomato fresh from the garden and, you know, and tasting it. Uh, it tastes so different than what you get in the grocery store or, or you know, I'm telling you, and it, it, it makes you feel amazing because you grew that tomato. Um, but that being said, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's also the, the, the one plant that um, makes everyone a little crazy because if we don't get a tomato, we get a little crazy. Um, beans tend to be a little bit uh, easier to grow. You can grow them both. Uh, they have, we, we have both uh, bush beans, which as the name suggests uh, is bushy. So it's, it's lower to the ground. And then you have the pole beans, which are actually on vines. And so you can trellis those. 
Um, melons work really well here. If you have the space, you know, by all means, grow corn. Uh, cucumbers do very well. Uh, I love eggplant. Uh, and also if you try to grow sweet potatoes, definitely make sure that you have space. That takes a lot of space and it actually, it has a long growing season. Um, and that you would probably want to start um, later versus sooner because it does not like chilly weather. Um, UGA has a uh, publication that tells you a lot about when to grow what. Uh, and if you check in your chat box, I believe there's a link up there that you can um, check that out. Okra is a wonderful thing to grow here in the South. Um, watermelon, I've never grown because of course it takes a lot of real estate. I don't have that kind of real estate, but if you do, there's nothing like a sweet Southern watermelon. Peppers, um, I've actually had the most success with probably hot peppers versus sweet peppers, but I know people who can grow sweet peppers, you know, very easily. Um, and squash, we grow both the winter and the summer squash here. And I can tell you if you grow summer squash, uh, it's, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So hopefully you have good neighbors or nice neighbors who like squash. Southern peas also, it, it grows really well here. Um, I've had great success with those. And uh, those I also trellis because of the fact that, uh, you know, they can grow pretty gnarly also. So cool season vegetables. They can be grown both in the fall and in late winter, early spring. Um, you can see there are actually a few of these uh, vegetables that have an asterisk by them. And those are vegetables that can be grown both as a cool season vegetable and as a warm season vegetable. You can grow them in both seasons. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, all of these cool season vegetables grow really well here. And um, the best thing about them, if you do grow them, is that uh, cooler weather means less bugs. So if you're really you know, adverse to the whole buggy thing, cool season vegetables are the way to go. Uh, some of the uh, vegetables that are actually on here, um, I actually grow all year round as well. So not just the ones that are ostrich, but you know, I, 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 I radishes for instance, I, I probably wouldn't grow them in the heat of summer, but I, they grow so fast, I, 30 days, boom, you have a radish. Uh, it pretty easy and they're great if you uh, have children because they love to pull the little radishes out of the ground. So the soil, probably the real secret to growing vegetable is the soil. Uh, and it's probably the secret to growing anything, frankly. Um, and soil preparation is key. First things first, you have to make sure you get a soil test. And preferably you want your pH to be somewhere in the 6 to 6.5 pH. And organic matter is extremely important, okay? And if you don't know what organic matter is, it's the byproduct of organic material that's been broken down and um, it decomposes and turns into what we call hummus. And the hummus is wonderful because it helps uh, retain water and, but it's very nutrient uh, dense and uh, it, the, it, it helps plants thrive. Um, if you actually already have really good soil, you know, the wonderful loamy stuff, uh, you probably would only need to maybe mix in some compost with it. Um, but if you're lucky like I am and live in Georgia and have Georgia clay, uh, you might want to be mixing that up with some other organic compost or some gardening so soil or soil conditioner um, in order to uh, condition uh, that clay, break it up a little bit just so that it's not so uh, hard and compact uh, and uh, you know, retains too much water. 
So we talked about soil tests. And if you haven't had a soil test before, I have to tell you, this is a very important step. It's probably the um, one of the first steps you should do even be at, probably in that first planning stage. So as soon as you figure out where you're gonna have that garden plot, you're gonna to have to take a sample of that soil. And so the extension office here in Cobb County has soil test bags that you can actually take and go and fill up and bring back. Uh, or you can get about two cups of soil and put it in a baggie and also bring it to the extension office. And I believe these days, the soil test is around $10 or so, um, but it's invaluable because not only will it tell you uh, the composition of your soil, but it will also tell you what you need in order to grow what you wanna grow. Uh, and that is very important because uh, as a vegetable gardener, you always wanna know the condition of your soil. The organic matter that we were talking about is the decay from composting organic waste. So be it your kitchen scraps or leaves or grass clippings. Um, you can also purchase organic matter uh, in bags at the big box stores. Um, and they come in, as you can see on the slide, the peat moss or mushroom compost, composted manure, um, and of course, if you're a composter at home, you can have your own homemade compost. But the reason why organic matter is so important, why we're stressing it, is because it really helps your soil. Um, it re retain its nutrients and also with the whole water uh, holding capacity. Uh, it, I tell you, if you don't amend your soil or if you don't uh, compost, you might want to really think about doing that. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, a, it's a wonderful vitamin boost, a mineral boost um, to do before you do any kind of planting, even if it's not vegetable planting. Are we going to choose seeds or are we going to choose plants? Um, or both? I say both because there are some vegetables that grow amazingly well just by tossing a few seeds in the ground. And there are some plants that don't do as well. They do better if you actually have a seedling and you can actually transplant that seedling. Um, it's up to you, of course, um, to figure out which you'd like to uh, experiment with. And you know, by all means, I say experiment because it is just so much fun to go out there and buy these seed packets and go through them and figure out if you can even try to grow some of these things from seeds. And when the little seedlings emerge, it's so exciting. So the seeds that are recommended that you see directly into the ground are the ones that you see on the slide here. Uh, carrots, beets, corn, beans, lettuces. Uh, I will tell you the larger the seed, the more benefit you get from actually soaking that seed overnight. And if you do soak that seed though, make sure you don't let that seed dry back out. Make sure after you soak that seed, immediately plant it, okay? Uh, that's very important. Um, a lot of the tiny seeds that you get, uh, you know, carrots and lettuces, you can kind of sprinkle on top of the ground and just sort of, you know, sprinkle a little dirt on top. Um, but you know, when you get the seed packet, the seed packet has a lot of information on it. So don't discard that information because it tells you the seed depth. It tells you uh, how, um, when to actually plant it. So uh, it, it, it gives you a little bit of an idea of how to handle that seed. So the plants that transplant fairly easily, as we said, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers. Well, we'll go back to the tomatoes first because we know that when you do plant tomatoes, a lot of times, you know, they're kind of tall and a little leggy. You want to actually plant it deep. Make sure that those tomato stems are uh, the, the, the actual most of the stem. I would say three-fourths of that actual plant 
be planted inside of the dirt in your soil um, because the roots will shoot out from the side of that stem and um, it will actually make the tomato more stable. There are several ways you can dig a deep hole, stick the tomato plant in there. There's also when, uh, a, a, a method called digging a trench where you actually dig a trench and then put the stem along there and plant it. You know, a tomato is technically a vine, so uh, it's not gonna hurt the tomato if it's actually not uh, directly down into the, into the soil uh, standing straight up. Um, cucumbers also transplant easily and they're also a vine if you haven't grown it before. And uh, so you'd want to either put it on a trellis like you see in the photo um, or figure out a way to stake it. Um, peppers also are, can they can, um, especially if you grow the sweet variety. I haven't really had to stake my hot peppers. Um, jalapenos and whatnot, they, they tend to bush out. And uh, I, I, I've never had an issue with that. Um, but some of the sweeter varieties, I, I, would, I would think you'd want to stake because the, the fruit gets pretty heavy. Um, squash, summer squash especially, um, they take a lot of space. So keep that in mind when you do plant that. Um, onions do better with a set versus the seed, although I've grown them both. Um, but they definitely grow better from planting the seeds. Melons are also uh, a vine and they can uh, be grown vertically. But again, you have to make sure that whatever you use, you might want to uh, stake extra extra support for those fruits when they come in because they get kind of heavy. You know, I probably watermelon is probably not going to be on a on a on a on a um, steak, but maybe a cantaloupe or so. Okay, and then hardening off um, just means, hardening off a vegetable means to take your seedling that's been grown either in a nursery or maybe you grew a, something from seed inside your house under some grow lights, and now it's a seedling. Uh, and then after the first frost date or whenever the UGA uh, uh, publication tells you when it's safe to actually plant your seedling, you want to give it a, uh, a period of time where it actually acclimates to the harsher conditions of the outdoors. And you do that by leaving them outside a few hours of a time each day for about a week in order to, uh, for them to stay out for a full day. And then the, then you can leave them out. So, uh, it's a good idea to do that so that they don't get sunburned or, you know, the extreme temperatures won't completely kill them off before they've had a chance to survive. So fertilize, mulch, and water. So sounds like this is the stuff that we need too, you know, water, we need protection, we need food. So basically those are the three things that you're gonna to do to make your garden grow. When you water, you typically would need about an inch, one half to an inch of water a week when you're water. Um, but in extreme heat, one of those optional things that I would tell you not to leave out because there's so many advantages to it. Um, number one, it will protect your plant from those extreme temperatures. Uh, number two, it conserves that moisture. So here you are watering your, your, your garden, it really conserves the moisture in your soil. Uh, it also prevents the splash up. So if you have mulch down and it rains or you water, you it prevents the, the, the dirt from splashing on the leaves. And that also prevents diseases um, from spreading as well. And when you do mulch, we would need to make sure that, first of all, uh, the fertilizer bag has three numbers. Uh, and those three numbers represents N, P, and K. The N represents nitrogen, 
and the K potassium. So those are the macronutrients that plants need in order to, uh, to grow. Uh, they also need inorganic, uh, not inorganic, sorry, micronutrients as well, uh, such as calcium, magnesium, and zinc, and boron. Um, but the big, the big players here are the three, uh, the NPK. Uh, and you have two choices. You can fertilize either organically or by using synthetic fertilizer. Um, and so if you use synthetic fertilizer, um, the best, or I wouldn't say, the best fertilizer in a synthetic is to use a 10-10-10. Uh, it's just, don't use anything higher than the 10-10-10 because it can actually uh, kill your plants by uh, burning the roots. Um, the good thing about a synthetic fertilizer is that it is inexpensive, it's easy to find in a big box store, and you, the plants take up the nutrients immediately. Uh, when you go with the organic fertilizer, uh, number one, you don't have to worry about burning the plants, so there's a plus on that side. Uh, and the other thing about organic fertilizer is that you might find yourself needing more of that particular fertilizer in order to get the same type of, of um, amount of the nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium that you would with the synthetic. Um, and lastly, with organic fertilizer is that they will not burn the soil or they won't harm the soil. So there is no danger of actually um, doing any damage in the long run where with synthetic, if you use too much synthetic fertilizer, you can actually do that. It can actually um, damage the micro biomes inside of the soil. When you do put fertilizer down, um, you'd want to make sure that you are putting down the fertilizer at planting and you would side dress it monthly also uh, by putting it next to your plants uh, on a monthly basis. Now, the amount of fertilizer that you're gonna need, again, it's going to depend on your soil test. Your soil test will tell you exactly how much fertilizer you actually going to need um, for your garden plot. So don't forget that soil test. So when all of that happens, your, your garden will grow, and all of a sudden you'll get vegetables. And when you get vegetables, you definitely need to be out there picking it often because they grow very quickly when they do produce. And sometimes if you don't pick them often enough, they can get very tough, they can get very seedy, they can get bitter, and they can signal the to the plant that it, um, that to stop producing fruit. So uh, you don't want any of that. Um, and I tell you, you know, just from my gardening experience, I find that picking vegetables when uh, they are more, when they're younger, they're tastier, uh, sweeter, and, uh, I t they, and, they, and they keep growing. So I, you know, those are such good reasons to, to, to pick them often. So definitely, pick them before your squirrels and your rabbits get to them. If you wanna keep your garden clean. So as you are harvesting, as you are gardening, uh, you want to make sure that if you have a dead plant, you wanna remove it because dead plants encourage diseases. It attracts non-beneficial bugs, which in turn, they lay eggs. Then the next thing you know, you have damage to next season. It sometimes, you know, you end up with the eggs in the soil. Trust me, you know, prevention is key. Just clean up as you go. It is much healthier and cleaner, and you'd be happier in the long run. Um, if you if you don't like the holes that are left behind because you know one plant is spent, you know, you can always plant another something to grow in that spot, um, or you can just put mulch there um, just to keep the weeds out, but, uh, but surely don't keep the dead plant there, okay? And um, you wanna take notes, 
Okay, that's a good thing, lesson to learn is to take notes about your garden. That way it, you, you can look back at your notes and find out what worked and what didn't work. Um, and also your notes will also help you rotate your crop um, because as a rule, you don't want to plant the same plant in the same place every year. So definitely rotate your crop and you don't want to uh, plant the same plant in the same space because sometimes uh, diseases can accumulate in the soil that is specific to that plant. So you want to make sure you have a rotation of at least three years before you use that same plant in the same place again. Compost. We talked about how organic matter matters and how wonderful it is for the health of your soil. Compost is um, a really easy thing to do. Um, it will help you uh, not only clean up plant remains from your own garden, you know, but make sure, and make sure that your whatever you're composting, they're not diseased plants. Uh, you will, it, it helps you recycle. Uh, it helps you save money. Um, it, it, it will help you improve your, the, the micro uh, biome inside of your soil. Everything about composting is wonderful. So definitely compost. So in the end, you always get out what you put in. And with vegetable gardening, it is no exception. You will always, with hard work, be able to benefit by eating your own vegetables. Um, it, it's, it's such a rewarding thing. Um, I can't even, I can't think of another happier thing to do outdoors than to go out and garden and then produce a, you know, something from a seed, practically nothing. And then you have this beautiful vegetable um, that you're, you know, have sitting on your table in the end. Um, this is just a recap of what we just learned. Uh, remember location, location. You always want to plant in good soil. You want to make sure your prep is in order. Make sure you prep everything. Um, don't forget food, water, and clothing protection. Was what, what the mulching is for. And you know, and harvest harvest often. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, this is uh, the publication. Uh, these are some of the publications that are recommended, but actually the amount of publications in the UGA directory is incredible. So please click on that link in the chat box and you will be able to uh, find a plethora of information and uh, happy harvest. Okay, uh, Sandra, thank you so much for that presentation. We hope that you will find our information informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel.